So as I was making that video yesterday about the various Captain Britney Corps members and Peggy Carter, what if, all that kind of stuff, something occurred to me. And I started thinking about that moment where I talked about how based on what Immortus told us, everybody thinks the Kang War was just Kang versus Kang. But what did Immortus say? Immortus told us that somewhere along the line, there was the multiverse, an infinite number of universes stacked on top of each other. And the first version of himself to realize that was some alternate reality version of Kang that lived in the 31st century. And that as they started exploring the multiverse, they started working together. So with each new universe that was discovered, that Kang most likely joined the various Council of Kangs, if we want to call it that, and they explored the multiverse together. But along the line, some of those Kangs realized that instead of sharing resources and technology, they would just conquer it. And so this led to the giant multiversal war that we're aware of. But I still stand by the idea it doesn't make any sense that you would just have Kangs fighting each other and that would somehow lead to the collapse of the multiverse, specifically because of the fact that Kangs focus on time travel. It's not as though every version of Kang the Conqueror or any version of Kang the Conqueror has the ability to manipulate reality on a universal scale or even a multiversal scale. These are not guys with the power of the Molecule Man Owen Reese who can just restructure the multiverse as he wishes to make it into whatever he wants it to be. Instead, their focus is time travel. Travel. And what we know with time travel from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that when you use it, you create alternate realities. So worst case scenario, these Kangs start using time travel to create other universes, potentially spawning more evil versions of themselves, but certainly not doing anything that would lead to the total destruction of the entire multiverse if they're all fighting each other. So it stands to reason that this Kang war was much bigger than we originally thought it was. That instead of it just being Kang versus Kang, it's these Kangs with huge armies. It's these Kangs where you have like variant versions of the Avengers fighting variant versions of the Avengers. Now on the surface, that doesn't seem very threatening, right? Like an Incredible Hulk fighting an Incredible Hulk. Okay, they fight each other to a stalemate, but with an infinite number of universes come an infinite number of possibilities, meaning that in one of those universes, it's an Incredible Hulk who was bitten by a radioactive spider. And now it's an Incredible Hulk with the power of Spider-Man. That kind of possibility exists out there in the multiverse, but the question still has to be asked, what led to the destruction of the multiverse in the first place? I think it's the Scarlet Witch, and I think the Ancient One had something to do with it. Let's talk about a guy called the Dweller in Darkness, because this will make a whole lot more sense in terms of unifying all these things. So a lot of you guys have heard of a guy named Galactus. Originally, his name was Gallon, and in the universe that he came from, his universe was collapsing. He didn't know why. But in the twilight of that universe's life, he merged with that universe's sentience and then was reborn into the new universe as Galactus. Done. That's all it really was. In the 1990s, Marvel released a comic called Adventures of the X-Men. It was actually a line of comics spanning some number of issues. But one of the things that it did was tie into the origin of Galactus by introducing a guy named the Dweller in Darkness. The whole idea behind this is that the Dweller in Darkness is what you call a fear lord. Imagine somebody like Mephisto, but instead of being a demon, it actually just feeds on fear, and that was the Dweller in Darkness. What the Dweller in Darkness wanted to do was basically fracture something called the Imkron Crystal, which was really this giant hallway of doors for the multiverse. The important thing here is that with the Imkron Crystal fractured, the multiverse started getting sucked in, and that's what led to the collapse of Galen's universe, along with basically every other universe in existence. Eventually, the Dweller in Darkness was defeated, but there was no way to stop the multiversal collapse. And so what Marvel did is they expanded that and they said what actually happened is that when Galactus merged with the sentience of the universe, he actually merged with the sentience of the multiverse, hence why every universe in the new multiverse has a version of Galactus. Why does that matter? Because if you take that concept, not necessarily verbatim, but you apply it to the MCU, what this tells us is that there had to be a singular being out there that had a level of power that was so extreme that it was a danger to the entirety of the multiverse. And that while it wouldn't be somebody like the Dweller in Darkness, it could certainly be the Scarlet Witch. The Scarlet Witch, as it's been stated to us, is more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. We'll talk about the controversies and the problem with that here in a second. But we also know based on WandaVision that presumably Wanda has left and gone into the multiverse. We know she'll be a part of Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness. And the idea is that she's the main villain there, which means she's a person on a multiversal level of power. If if that's the case, then it stands to reason that Agatha Harkness and all those guys know about the prophecy of the Scarlet Witch and her return as being something that will basically lead to another multiversal war, or at least be a part of the multiversal war, because that's how it played out originally with Kang. That one of those versions of Kang got his hands on the Scarlet Witch, presumably used her to literally start going through and wiping out whole other universes. Now this begs the question, why is this universe with Immortus still around? 
right? Was the, the whole sacred timeline really reformed out of the remnants of the multiverse? No, I don't think so. So the whole thing behind this is that I think of Mortis, that version of Jonathan Majors that we saw at the end of Loki, this whole timeline that we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that's his timeline, that he was able to keep his timeline protected. He was able to keep it safe. And the reason why was using the power of the Ancient One. See, one of the things that's kind of funny about this is that if you look at the Ancient One in the original Doctor Strange film, the Ancient One talks to Stephen Strange about the multiverse. But I have a very hard time believing that the Ancient One with all of her vaulted power and all of her experience transferring and getting involved in all these different dimensional calamities and all that kind of stuff, doesn't know about the TVA and doesn't know about Immortus. I have a very hard time believing that. I think what actually happened here is that in this multiversal war that took place with all these Kangs, the Ancient One was still around. We don't know how old she is, we just know she's very old. Quite literally, Doctor Strange asks Baron Mordo, how old is the Ancient One? And he says, we don't know. We just know that she's ancient. But the cool thing is that if you look at that, it's entirely possible that during this multiversal war, that maybe every other universe had its own version of the Ancient One. Who knows, who cares? But this version of the Ancient One, played by Tilda Swinton, worked with Immortus to preserve the universe, to save it from the power of the Scarlet Witch. How can the Ancient One do that if the power of the Scarlet Witch transcends the power of the Sorcerer Supreme? Here's a problem with the prophecy or the idea that Agatha Harkness threw out there in talking about the power of the Sorcerer Supreme versus the power of the Scarlet Witch. Her knowledge comes from the Darkhold, but we don't know when the Darkhold was written. We don't know how old it is. We don't know if it's one of these instances where at that particular point in time, the power of the Sorcerer Supreme was limited in comparison to the power of the Ancient One. Maybe the Ancient One's power grew as time went on. We know that there were Sorcerer Supremes before her. And so even if it wasn't necessarily the Ancient One that worked with Immortus, it's entirely possible one of the Sorcerer Supremes did. And that knowledge was passed down from Sorcerer Supreme to Sorcerer Supreme. And that when Stephen Strange was told about the multiverse by the Ancient One, she was lying her ass off. That she wasn't saying that there's an actual multiverse. I mean, she was. There's an infinite number of universes, so on and so forth. But she lied to him. She showed him dimensions, but didn't actually show him universes. Why? Because the multiverse doesn't exist. The multiverse didn't exist. The multiverse hasn't existed for a long time. And are you really going to trust that knowledge with a guy that you met five minutes beforehand? So it kind of makes sense that the Ancient One would be lying to Stephen Strange. He would eventually figure it out over time, and he would discover that, hey, like the the TVA exists because there was a Kang War and that it being like the Scarlet Witch from some far-flung universe and some however many you know, years ago ended up helping this Kang conquer all of existence. So hey, it's in our best interest to keep this quiet. Like it's, it's, it makes sense that that's the case. And so if you look at it, kind of consolidating all of this together, right? The Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline exists in its current form because some Kangs from an alternate reality banded together, decided they wanted to conquer the universe. One of those Kangs got their hands on the Scarlet Witch, sort of wiping out all these different alternate realities and that whatever Sorcerer Supreme existed in the main Marvel Universe at the time worked alongside the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of Kang, also known as Immortus, to preserve the universe and to keep it safe and isolated away so that when the multiversal war was going on between all these Kangs, they were doing what amounted to standing on a hillside and watching it all unfold. And then instead, their universe was safe. It was kept hidden away from everything so that when the multiverse collapsed, theirs was the only one left. And the bargain they struck was no one's going to know the multiverse multiverse actually doesn't exist. Anybody out there who ever asks any questions is going to be told that it does. Any Sorcerer Supreme that comes after you, you will tell them the multiverse exists. How are they going to know the difference? And then in turn, they will fulfill their role as a Sorcerer Supreme, they'll learn the truth about why the multiverse doesn't exist, and they'll keep it secret for the greater good. I, as Immortus, will stay at the end of time, and I will form a TVA to make sure that no other realities come into existence so we don't have to worry about a repeat of this Kang War. I think the whole thing was huge. And I think it was literally a bargain that was struck between whoever the Sorcerer Supreme was and, and Kang the Conqueror Immortus. I think that's what happened. And I love that idea. I love the idea that the Kang War was just colossal, right? Whole realities. I mean, imagine that. Variants of the Avengers fighting variants of the Avengers. Evil Avengers. Avengers who were good, but they have to do it anyway. Otherwise, they're going to be wiped out by that version of Kang. People who are serving these different variants of Kang, all of which are variants of characters that we already know. Iron Man fighting Iron Man. Captain America's fighting Captain America's. The Captain Britain Corps is involved. All that kind of stuff. I think it's huge. And I think as time goes on, we're going to find out that there is a lot happening when it came to that Kang War. As it was told to us by Immortus, was just focusing on Kangs. I think Doctor Strange 2 is going to invoke a lot of that stuff. I think it's going to show us a lot of crazy things. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I'm really curious what your all's thoughts are on this. It was kind of a spur of the moment theory. Admittedly, I haven't given it a whole lot of thought. I probably should have. 
have. But honestly, I just like making videos where I just throw theories out there and just see what sticks. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. If you love it, you hate it, punch holes in it. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all later. Peace.